Chewing gum. Is it healthy? Chewing gum can support health in many ways, and not only in the oral cavity. It turns out that it can help, for example, after operations. However, everything should be done in moderation, because you can have problems. Learn more about the benefits of chewing gum wisely. According to the American Dental Association, chewing sugar-free gum can help protect teeth from decay. It multiplies the amount of saliva, which dissolves acids and contains tooth-protecting proteins. Chewing for a short time after a meal is therefore supposed to result in fewer cavities. Who knows, maybe our ancestors knew about it. In today's Scandinavia, archaeologists have found traces of matter that was most likely 9,000 years old. Years ago, it was used much like today's store-bought leaves or pills. It turns out, however, that chewing gum works not only on the oral cavity and can help in various ways, and scientists are working on other methods of using it. There is already a lot of work that has shown the importance of oral health for a healthy pregnancy. No wonder, bacteria present in the dental plaque and those causing inflammation of the gums penetrate into the bloodstream and have an adverse effect, among others, on the circulatory system or the developing pregnancy. Gynecologists usually remind patients planning pregnancy or expecting a child to have their teeth treated before pregnancy and to take care of them during pregnancy. It is also necessary to emphasize oral hygiene and prevent the formation of plaque. There are studies that suggest that poor oral health increases the risk of miscarriage and premature birth. The research of the team from Texas Children's Hospital expands knowledge in this matter and gives hope for a simple and inexpensive way to minimize this risk. They show that chewing gum with xylitol, a natural alcohol used as a sweetener, by expectant mothers significantly reduces the risk of premature birth. Researchers conducted this study in Malawi whose inhabitants give birth to the highest number of premature babies in the world. It lasted a whole decade and was attended by as many as 10,000 people. Women. The study was randomized. About half of the participants started chewing xylitol sweetened gum before conception or by the 20th week of pregnancy and received advice on the need to care for the oral cavity. The other half received only advice. The volunteers in the first group chewed gum for only 10 minutes once or twice a day. Surprisingly, the researchers report a significant drop in the number of premature births. The percentage of premature babies in the group of women chewing xylitol gum decreased from 16.5 to 12.6 percent. At the same time, in the group of women chewing gum with xylitol, fewer babies were born with low weight 8.9%. Compared to 12.9%, women who were only informed about the need to take care of oral health. Chewing gum also improved the oral health of women. What is unique about our study is that we used a readily available inexpensive and palatable agent to reduce the risk of having a premature or underweight baby. Scientific research shows that xylitol gum supports oral health. And our new approach to birth control has produced exciting results, says Dr. Kirsty Agard, study author. It is with the impact of chewing gum with xylitol on the oral cavity that scientists associate a greater number of normal births. It was a job of passion undertaken with colleagues from Malawi. We had the honor of working together to show the effects of xylitol in chewing gum at or before pregnancy. In women, periodontitis decreased during pregnancy, which was strongly associated with the observed reduction in the number of premature births and underweight newborns, emphasizes the researcher. A different mechanism of action of chewing gum was indicated by researchers from Crozer Chester Medical Center. 
they discovered its positive effects after open-heart surgeries. Although it did not support the blood-pumping organ itself, it did protect against other types of complications, intestinal obstruction that sometimes occurs after surgery. No one should self-medicate with chewing gum after heart surgery, but project leader Dr. Siri S. Seng says, before our study, there were no published papers on the use of chewing gum in heart surgery. However, we have found that it can help your bowels return to normal faster. This easy-to-implement intervention can be used in almost all surgical patients. The percentage of patients with impaired intestinal patency dropped from 3.43 to 0.59%, i.e. almost six times. Given the minimal risk associated with chewing gum, editorial note, and the extremely low cost of such an intervention, the inclusion of chewing gum in standard care after heart surgery should definitely be seriously considered, adds the expert. After such information, reports from other scientific teams, who talk about similar results obtained after digestive system procedures, should not come as a surprise. Probably our physiology is responsible for such results. Just chewing gum is a signal sent to the brain that soon the intestines will be filled with food content, so they begin to prepare for it. In other words, chewing gum makes them move. At the same time, gum, the one without sugar, can support the second pillar of health, a proper diet. This is indicated, for example, by a study conducted by Louisiana State University, although for the sake of fairness it should be mentioned that it was financed by one of the large rubber manufacturers. In an experiment with over a hundred men and women aged 18 to 54, sugar-free gum reduced cravings for snacks, especially sweet-tasting ones. Overall, this study shows the potential of chewing gum to control appetite, reduce snacking and maintain a healthy weight. Even small changes in calorie intake can make a difference in the long term. This study demonstrates the role that chewing gum can play as an easy-to-use, practical means of reducing snacking and cravings, especially sweet ones, says study author Dr. Paula J. Geiselman. Special gums are also available on the market, with various active substances, for example vitamins. It's worth knowing if they really work or if it's just a marketing ploy. Fortunately, Researchers at Pennsylvania State University took a look at it. They checked how the concentration of various vitamins in the saliva and in the blood of volunteers changed after chewing two such products. I was a bit surprised that no one had done this type of study before, given the number of gum supplements on the market. But ultimately, there is no requirement that nutritional gums be tested for effectiveness as they fall into the category of dietary supplements, says test lead professor Joshua Lambert. His team detected increases in the concentrations of vitamins A1, B1, B2, B3, B6, B12, folic acid, vitamin C and E in saliva, and vitamins A1, B6. C and E in plasma after chewing gum enriched with these substances. When it comes to blood concentrations, the most significant increase was related to water-soluble vitamins B6 and C rubber. However, has the property that various compounds can be added to it. This prompted scientists from the University of Pennsylvania to develop an invention that could even save lives. They presented cinnamon gum that contains the ACE2 protein, the same protein that SARS-CoV-2 attaches to on the surface of human cells. Protein acts as a trap for the virus here. As laboratory tests have already shown, it neutralizes the virions present in saliva. SARS-CoV-2 multiplies in the salivary glands and we know that when someone is infected and sneezes, 
coughs or talks, some viruses can escape and infect others. This gum offers the potential to neutralize the virus in saliva, which could mean a simple method of reducing disease transmission, says Dr. Henry Daniel. Now this discovery needs to be tested in human clinical trials. Not always what gives results in laboratory tests gives similar results when tested in humans. As it turns out, chewing gum, or rather its excessive use, can, for example, cause headaches, at least in young people. This was noticed by scientists from Tel Aviv University. They asked 30 patients aged 6 to 19 with chronic migraines to stop chewing gum for a month. Previously, they did it from an hour to six hours a day. The results surprised the researchers. Of our 30 patients, 26 reported significant improvement, including 19 headaches that disappeared completely, said Dr. Nathan Wattenberg, one of the authors of the study. 20 of those who felt better later agreed to go back to chewing gum. All symptoms returned immediately. Researchers suspect that the cause of the pain is overloading the temporomandibular joint. Every doctor knows that excessive strain on the temporomandibular joint causes headaches. I think that's what happened when kids and teens chewed gum too much, says Dr. Wattenberg. The research sample in this experiment was very small, but just in case, when buying gum, it is worth remembering about moderation in its chewing. It is also better to check the composition of the chewing gum. There are studies indicating the possible harmful effects of some artificial sweeteners. So it is also better not to overdo it with the amount. What if you swallow gum? Rarely, mainly when swallowing a large amount, e.g. many small pieces, the digestive system may be blocked. In general, however, although gum is not digested, it is easily excreted from the body.